Welcome to the Math Record. Today I'll be covering the second part of the ICTM State 2017 Division AA Freshman Sophomore A Person, which I'll be answering questions 15 and then 19. Okay, question 15. If 4 to the power of 42 times 2 to the power of 95 minus 1 plus 2 to the power of 43 minus 3 is computed and answered in uh, base 2, compute the number of zeros that will appear in the base 2 representation of the number of the answer. Okay, so let's put this all with exponent 2. I mean with base 2 with some kind of exponent. So 4 to the power of 42, that's just 2 to the power of 84. Okay, so 2 to the power of 84 because 2 times 42 is 84. So it's just exponent rules. So 2 to the power of 95 minus 1 plus and then 2 to the power of 43. And then minus 3 is the same thing as minus 2 and minus 1. So minus 2 to the power of 1. And then minus 1 is just 2 to the power of 0. So I'm going to write this instead of minus 3. So minus 2 to the power of 1, minus 2 to the power of 0. OK, so I'm going to distribute this out. So this is 2 to the power of 179, minus 2 to the power of 84, plus 2 to the power of 43, minus 2 to the power of 1, minus 2 to the power of 0. And that is our base 10 number. So how do we convert this into base 2? Well, you got to have an idea of how base change work. So instead of convert from base 10 to base 2, let's convert from base 2 to base 10 and see what's happening. So let's say we have a number 1101 base 2. So how would this work is 1 to the power of 20, 2 to the power of 3, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2, plus 0 times 2 to the power of Kind of splitting this up a little bit, so I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter. Just kind of separate. The, I'm trying to separate this so it becomes a lot clearer. Plus zero times two to the power of one, plus one times two to the power of zero. So we kind of look with this. This matches with this. This one matches with this. This matches with this, and this one matches with this. And they're all in base two, so it's two, two, two. 2, which is different exponents. So the first unit digit is the 0, the, then the tenths digit is 1, the hundred digit is 2, and this one is 3. So you kind of map them out. That's 3, 2, 1, and 0, right? So we start at 0, and we're going up each time. And then these coefficients, the 1, 1, 0, 1, the 1, 1, 0, 1, just matches this number. And that's how we convert from base 2 to this number, which is in base 10. So if we want to go to the reverse process, right? So this is base 10. We want to convert it into base 2. So what we're going to do is, since we already have this form, all we have to look is the coefficients and then kind of just uh, changes the 1 and zeros around. OK, so we have an idea of how that works. So if you don't know what's happening, I'm just going to explain how I got how this answer could be um, like derived. So let's make a line which basically re represents all numbers from 0 to 179, because that's their exponents. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 179. So this is going to be 2 to the power of 0, and this is going to be 2 to the power of 179. OK, so if we kind of ignore everything else and just focus on 2 to the power of 179, what would that look like in base 2? Well, if you think about it, there's only this coefficient is 1, so that means this coefficient is 1, but there's no 2 to 179 plus 2 to 178 plus 2, 177, etc., right? And all these would be coefficient 1, so it would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, all the way. So we have 179 plus to the 0, so 180 ones to base 2. So we don't have that. So everything else would just be 0 because they're missing. So everything else in between. It's just at 0. So I'm just going to call everything else here 0. And this also ends at 0. So when I put a number between like two numbers, I'm just saying everything else between is just that number. So we have the only 1 is at the 2 to 179. OK, now we have 2 to the power of 84. So let's put that on our line. And let's say it's like somewhere right, I don't know, right here. Actually, let's put it below. Actually, I'll put it right in the middle. So 2 to the power 84. So we're taking away 1. But everything else in between is 0, right? 
So how do we take a one away from a zero? Well, as simple as like how we always do math, we have to borrow from somewhere. And the only thing we could borrow from is this number. So we take away the one here, so this becomes a zero, and then everything else here becomes one. Until we get to two to the power 84, which is the last one, because this zero has to turn into something, so it turns into one. So everything else between these, uh, from 179 to, to 184, all those numbers are uh, one. So I'm just gonna put one here so we represent where it ends at, all these ones at it, ends at. That means all these numbers afterwards, which are still zero, are still zero because they're unaffected by this two to 84. Because it only affects all these numbers that are really, really big, and all the numbers that are really small. So that's still zero at the end. And now we're gonna focus on this number. So we're slowly going down each number. So we just did this one and then this one. So now we're working on this one. So we're gonna have to update this set now. So two to power 43, let's say somewhere in the middle. So let's say two to 43 right here. It doesn't really matter. We're just kind of getting an idea how this looks. So it's not gonna affect anything right here. So zero, one. So we're adding a 43, so a coefficient of one to a zero. So all we have to do is that zero becomes a one. Because once a, a, if you add a one to a zero, it's just one in base two. If we add another one, that'll be two in base two, which is not possible because all the numbers have to be lower than the base. So that becomes a zero and then the next term becomes one. So that's basically how it works. So we can split all the numbers from here to here. Since they're all zeros in between, we had to add a one to here. That means everything else is still zero in between. Okay. So actually, let me delete that one first. So one, zero, one, zero, and zero. Okay. So that means all the, so the, t so basically what this is basically saying right now, if it's not really clear what I'm doing, is 179th term is zero. And then all the way from 178 to two, two to 84, so 178 to 84, all those numbers are one. And then from to the 83rd to the 40, uh, 44th, they're all zeros. And then the 43rd is one. And then the 42nd all the way to the zero is all zeros. So that's basically what I'm just saying right now. So now we have two to the power one. So two to the power one is like somewhere right here. And we have to take one away from it. But all these are zeros. So it's the same case of what we did when we was 84. So we take one away, we need to take away the highest one, which is the one right here. So that becomes a zero. So all these else become unaffected. So let's write that down first. So that means all these zeros all become one. And then this one is the last one that be, remains at one, similar to what happened with the 84, how it became one and one. And then we have a zero. Okay, and now we take away a one times two to the power zero, from two to the power zero right here. So this zero, you have to take away uh, one. So this is the same case as the 284 and the two to one where we take away stuff. So then this zero becomes a one. So which one do we take away from? This one, so this becomes a zero. So since it already take away every, everything from here, uh, everything else is left alone. Okay, so if you think about it, how many zeros do we have? Well, these zeros don't count. The zero for two to the power of 179 doesn't count because let's say we have a number base 10 and let's call that 15, right? If you add a zero in front, that's not another zero. That doesn't make sense because then you could just put infinitely amount of zeros and that's still 15. So that doesn't count. So all these in the coefficient of um, zero doesn't count. So these are not a thing. So the only coefficient of zeros, I mean, all the zeros terms are right here and here. So what is this? What are these right here? Well, that is going to be from the 83rd all the way to the 43rd. And this zero is only two to the power of one. So there's only one zero after that. So how many zeros are in here? Well, 83 minus the 43, that's 40. Since we include the 43, that is 41. Or you can just count it 43, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, all the way into 83. There should be 41 numbers in there. So there's 41 zeros. And then 41 plus this one, because that's 2 to the power of 1, will equal to our 42 zeros. And that's your answer for number 15. So it takes a while to understand what's happening, but I kind of explained this in like 9 minutes, so 10 minutes. So 
it's kind of a long time, but once you understand it, it should make sense. Okay, now number fifth, number 19. And I saw triangle ABC with AB is equal to BC. P lies on AC such that E lies on BC and D lies on AB such that PE is perpendicular with BC and PD is perpendicular with AB. And then G lies on BC such that AG is the altitude of ABC, EG is 8, PA is 17, and AG is 18. Determine the length of EP. Okay. So let's kind of make a isosceles uh, triangle. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, and there's basically a point right here. So these are, they were just describing the diagram. Oops, wrong one. Actually, let's put it right here. And then there's some kind of length, which is perpendicular to this length. And then there's another length that's perpendicular with this one. And then there is a point right here from this vertex, which is the altitude. So it's perpendicular with this side length. Okay, so let me label the right angles, which is right here, here, and here. And they said that AG is 18, so this entire length is 18. They say EG is equal to 8 and PA is 17. So we need to find the length of EP. So we're finding this length. So what we could do is that I'm going to make a rectangle from this point, and it's got to be perpendicular to this line. OK. So make a right angle. So basically what's happening is that this line is perpendicular to both these lines. And if this line is perpendicular to this line, it must be perpendicular to this line because these two are parallel. So what I did was that I make a rectangle. So let me erase that first. So that's a rectangle. So that tells us that this length is equal to this length. So that's 8. And if you kind of think about it, this is a triangle, which is 17 and 8. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem to get this right triangle, this length right here. So, or you could use the Pythagorean triple, which is the 8, 15, 17. So that tells us that this length over here is 15. But we know this entire length is 18, right? So 18 minus 15, that means this length is 3. So if we want to find this length, which this is a rectangle, we would just move this down. So that's just 3. So our length for EP is just 3. And that's all you have to do for number 19. You just need to recognize that you could just make a re rectangle right here and make everything really easier for yourself. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next math record.